It's good everybody's getting along. Appreciate the camaraderie and the conversations, but we already um, are running behind. And so and, uh, in respect to the public, I wanna go ahead and start. So May 12 board of directors meeting is called to order. First, I'd like to ask Ruth to explain how to access interpretation. Ms. Ruth. Yes, thank you. This annou announcement is for on-site participants and I will repeat the message in English. Si se ha unido a la reunión de hoy en la sala de juntas de Sandag y necesita interpretación al español, por favor diríjase a la recepción del piso 8 y solicite un receptor. Simplemente prende el receptor, coloque el audífono junto a su oído y la interpretación comenzará automáticamente. If you are joining us today in the Sandag boardroom and need interpretation into Spanish, please check out a receiver from the receptionist on the eighth floor. Simply hold the earpiece to your ear and the interpreter will come on automatically. And the following announcement is for remote participants. Para hacer uso del servicio de interpretación, por favor, desplácese a la parte inferior de la pantalla de Zoom donde aparecen los controles. Haga clic en el icono de interpretación, el globo terráqueo, y seleccione Spanish, Español. Si está utilizando la aplicación móvil de Zoom en celular o tableta, presione los puntos suspensivos, luego Interpretation y luego el idioma. To use the interpreting feature, please scroll to the bottom of the Zoom screen where the meeting controls are located and click on the interpretation icon, the world. Then select your language. If you are joining using the Zoom mobile app on a cell phone or tablet, please press the ellipses, then interpretation, and then choose your language. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start the meeting with a tribal acknowledgement. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the land that we call home. Tribal nations of the San Diego region have historically faced injustices. We acknowledge the harmony that existed between the land, nature, and its original peoples who have since endured displacement, persecution, and systemic oppression. We pay our respect for the, uh, to the unceded territory and homelands of the 18 tribal nations in our region, the most in any county in the United States from our cultural groups, the Kumeya, de Guiño, de Luiseño, de Cupeño, and the Cahuilla. This land has nourished, healed, protected, and embraced them for many generations in a relationship of balance and harmony. As members, of Sandag community, we acknowledge this legacy and we aspire to learn from indigenous traditional knowledge and experiences, experiences in undoing the injustices of the past. Now, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Um, Tessa, can you please uh, call roll now? Good morning for City of Carlsbad, Council Member Burkholder. Burkholder, present. City of Chula Vista, Council Member Cardenas. Present. City of Coronado, Council Member Duncan. Present. County of San Diego, Chair Vargas. Vargas, present. County of San Diego, Supervisor Anderson. Here. City of Del Mar, Council Member Gasterlin. Here. City of El Cajon, Mayor Wells. Here. City of Encinitas, Mayor Kranz. Here. City of Escondido, Mayor White. Present. City of Imperial Beach, Council Member Fisher. Fisher here. City of La Mesa, Council Member Shu. Shu here. City of Lemon Grove, Mayor Vasquez. Here. City of National City, Vice Mayor Molina. National City present. City of Oceanside, Deputy Mayor Kime. City of Poway, Mayor Voss. Here. City of San Diego, Council Member Campillo. Here. City of San Diego, Vice Chair Elo Rivera. Present. City of San Marcos, Mayor Jones. Jones here. City of Santee, Mayor Minto. Minto here. City of Solana Beach, Vice Chair Hebner. Here. City of Vista, Council Member Melendez. Melendez present. Raquel Trans, Executive Director Delarda. Here. MTS is absent. North County Transit District, uh, Council Member Edson. Present. Imperial County is absent. U.S. Department of Defense is absent. Port of San Diego, Joe Here. Stuyvesant. Here. San Diego County Water Authority, Director Cotts. Here. San Diego County Regional Airport Authority, um, Gil Cabrera. Here. And Mexico and the Tribal Chairman's Association are absent. And, that, and we are confirmed to quorum. Thank you. Okay. 
one minute. I just kind of right. with that, I'm going to go ahead and begin. Um, this is for the public and members not agent comment um, input from public is an important part of our process as a board and as detailed on the covers of today's agenda public input may be offered both in writing and verbally and per our board policy the amount of time allowed for each verbal public comment is determined based on the number of agenda items the complexity of those items and the number of persons anticipated to offer comment this allows us to hear from as many people as possible and to complete our business while we still have a quorum based on those factors for today's meeting member of the public will be allowed one minute for their comments and so with that um Ms. Tessa, public comment. Thank you. Our non-agenda public comments are limited to five people, five commenters at the beginning of the meeting. All others will be taken at the end of the meeting. The five commenters are all in person. I'll start with Gretchen Newsom, who will be followed by Truth. One minute, right? Okay, one minute. Gretchen Newsom of IBW569 here today on behalf of the Let's Go San Diego campaign, a citizen's initiative that will help fund our regional transportation plan. I'd like to share with you the news that later today we will be filing our initiative with the county registrar of voters and putting this forward so that um, transit can be provided to all of San Diego and we can lower commute times for all of San Diego. This initiative will move the entire region forward and improve everyone's quality of life with equity while mitigating harm. And over the past few years, a historic historic coalition of citizens, labor, and businesses, Democrats and Republicans, climate act activists, and local communities have come together to secure a better transportation future for San Diego County that we all deserve. So again, later today we'll be filing. We look forward to continuing to collaborate with all communities across San Diego, and let's go, San Diego. Thank you. Our next speaker is Truth, who will be followed by Jeff. This is Truth, the number one public comment all-star. Look, Sean, I even got a new jacket pin just for you. Regarding the last Sandag meeting on April 28th, Rebecca, man, you sure got ripped off at the end with your inquiries. Now you know what it's like to be a member of the all-star club where nothing gets answered and usually disrespect is given, but don't give up. And I want to say a thank you to Katie for standing up for the public's right to speak with enough time. We're not getting it today. And Terry, you are all for what you called experiments to ex uh, incentivize people to take the trolley. But who are you to experiment with our lives and money? And she also said, Sandag spending lots of money, more than $300 million to dig holes in Del Mar. But guess what? All Sandag is really doing is digging one big pit to dead hell for San Diego County. For our Mexican amigos, también. Speaker Mark said that Sandag will probably just change the name of the road user charge to something else. My recommendation is Hassan Vader's Death Star Road Beam. And we could, but you know, we can fix things here. We could just start with the elimination of Sandag because they're wasting tons of our money, especially Hassan with his very, very expensive lunches. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jeff, who will be followed by Kara. And then our final speaker will be Mary Davis. My name is Jeff. I don't think that many of you realize what uh, you're a part of here in this room. What's at play in this room is the in intended rollout of the New World Order, Agenda 21 with the mile marker of Agenda 2030. It is a dystopian anti-freedom enslaving long plan that is coordinated by the cabal via the WEF and the UN. COVID was just the deceptive kickoff event. The deep pop shot and destruction of small business was intentional, as is the destruction of our dollar. Anything smart, streetlights included, is about surveillance, tracking, and control. Trying to get the people out of their cars via VMT is about slowly confining the slaves to your 15-minute cities. You are all the unknowing henchmen of this cabal. ARPA funds are the bait. You remember how in recollection of 1930s Germany, everyone asked, well, how did the people fall for it? And we hear that history repeats. Well, you are the Nuremberg doctors this time around. You are falling into a trap and leading your constituents into their Holocaust boxcars. Snap out of it. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kara, who will be followed by our final speaker, Mary Davis. My name is Kara. I have lived in San Diego. I was born here for 40 years, and I'm here to let you all know that as a San Diegan, and I represent my family as San Diegans, that we do not consent to the road usage charges. We do not consent to all of your dirty little plans about 15 minute cities. Sean, I know this is boring, but you do get paid to be here just like the way you get paid at San Diego City Council. You should pay attention. You know, I watched your guys' um, movements and 
how you interacted with each other at the last meeting. And you guys are really, really rude. You're very dismissive to the people that sit on this board with you. You're rude to the people that take their time out of their days to come up here and speak to you. And you guys are getting paid. Nora, you're going to be getting paid, I think, over five hundred to $600,000 a year based on all of the boards that you represent, Board of Supervisors and this board. You're going to be making a ton of money. You just gave yourself a raise at BOS yesterday, right? How much was that raise for? A lot. We're all keeping tabs on you. We all do not consent and we'll hold you guys accountable. And we will fight you until hell freezes over and then we will fight you on the ice. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to state for the record that the speakers um, who are virtual and all the other remaining speakers will be taken at the end of the meeting. For the virtual, please raise your hand at that time. And Mary Davis is our final speaker. Uh, good morning, board. Uh, Mary Davis here to highlight a troubling trend that is now broached into the realm of unacceptable. Within just three short months, the leadership of this board has rapidly ratcheted down the public's time to speak and has now started restric restricting even the directors themselves. Additionally, you've taken a three-hour meeting and shaved it down to two hours. What next? Whittle it down to one and tell us we have 20 seconds to speak. The suppression of voices, first the publics and now the governing members themselves, is a bridge too far. I am insisting, and I'm hoping directors with integrity will join me, that the following be reinstated. Restore public comments to two minutes. Return the executive meetings to its 8 a.m. time slot expand the director's meetings back to three hours. When meeting management uh, be, limits voices and dissent, it actually devolves into censorship. Thank you. That concludes the public comments. Okay, um, any member comments? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chair. Um, in light of uh, the discussion from one of our public speakers today uh, mentioning the Citizens Initiative, I would implore um, the chair to please put an agenda item on the agenda for the board of directors to be responsible and talk about us putting on an initiative uh, for uh, the vote of San Diego County residents to vote whether they want to tax themselves a half a cent sales tax to pay for uh, this uh, regional transportation plan. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, and so just for clarification, I am really happy to see um, all of the public speakers that um, come with me to the Board of Supervisors and to Luge and here I absolutely appreciate uh, the process as someone who had, was an advocate, for those of you who don't know me, I was an advocate for almost 30 years, an organizer, and the person talking about issues around transportation specifically, advocating for the issues in our communities. And so I really appreciate uh, our uh, community coming forth. And then there's a lot of other mechanisms for folks to be able to share information with us, emails, you know, connecting with us in our specific offices and everything like that. So I just want to make sure that no, everybody understands that the community is not being silenced. Uh, and I want to make sure that all of, that we put that on the record, number one. Number two, um, in the executive committee, I mentioned to my colleagues that there was um, some changes in how the board was taking member comments for purposes of making sure that there's transparency, which is my commitment to all of you. You all sat with me at the board uh, retreat and we had a whole conversation about discussion was going to take longer, which is why this meeting started late today because first of all, I was a little bit late for the meeting before, but then we wanted to have a robust conversation about the budget and I didn't want to cut, shut anybody off and we did have a thorough conversation. That conversation will continue on. Um, I'm not doing that because I'm a good person. I'm doing that because I believe that is the process that we need to follow. And and so um, we have board member comments at the beginning of the agenda, and we're going to have board member comments and uh, public comments at the end of the agenda as well. And this meeting doesn't end in two hours. This meeting ends whenever we're done with our agenda items. And so if anybody has questions, concerns, I just want to make sure that we clarify that for everyone. Now, next up, what we have is, oh, okay, uh, let's see, uh, Caltrans. Thank you, Chair Vargas. I have three quick um, messages that are non-agenda uh, items. The first one is that the uh, local grant program under the Clean California initiative, uh, the application deadline has been extended until the end of May. 
for those agencies that needed a little bit more time. Previously, the, the application deadlines were at the end of April, but we heard loud and clear that some agencies need a little more time. So we have a couple more weeks to receive applications under, and under that program. The second message that I wanted to uh, say was to thank all of you in North County for your patience as we repaired uh, the uh, two mile stretch of State Route 78 uh, that was damaged by a sinkhole. I, I know it took a couple of months uh, and, and the detour wasn't easy, uh, but I wanna uh, say our appreciation for the public and also for the elected officials that were affected by this. We did work around the clock. Uh, it, it's not easy uh, to dig a freeway uh, 60 foot down in the middle of a freeway and replace uh, a numerous drainage systems that had contributed to that sinkhole. So thank you. Uh, thank you again for your patience. And the third thing that I wanted to mention is a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated our Highway Worker Memorial event here in San Diego and also in Sacramento. Um, that's where we honor the lives of 191 Caltrans employees that died in the line of duty. Uh, two of them last year, uh, Quanda McCadney in, in the Bay Area uh, lost her life when a vehicle went into a shoulder and hit her, left a 10-year-old behind. And Shabazz Ali, um, he uh, worked in the Fresno area and uh, he lost his life uh, while uh, driving to work. Uh, to one of, uh, he's a, He was a civil engineer in the field and while he was going uh, uh, to one of the projects, uh, a motorist ran a stop sign, uh, killing him, and he left behind seven uh, kids. Uh, so, so these are real people uh, with real families, and we could have had the num number 192 uh, here two weeks ago on the same day that we were having the, the Highway Worker Memorial event in Sacramento. Uh, one of our own employees, a young man, uh, was hit while removing debris on I-8 near the city of El Cajon uh, by a truck that was driving erratically and went into the shoulder. Uh, our employees uh, sustained severe injuries. Uh, he had, he's going to have a long road to recovery. Uh, I'm grateful that he's alive, and I'm grateful that the California Transportation Foundation has established a fund uh, to try to help him financially. Uh, we will share the information with the clerk. Uh, but I, what I ask of all of you is please continue repeating the safety messages, move over campaign, distracted driving, impaired driving. Uh, we need alert drivers out there watching out for construction employees, for maintenance employees, and also for emergency responders. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just uh, very briefly, I wanted to note a significant milestone in our new Terminal 1 construction. Uh, our local iron workers over the last two weeks have begun erecting the steel frame of the new Terminal 1 building. So if you haven't been by the airport over the last couple of weeks, the next time you drive by, you'll actually see the beginning shape of our new terminal, which we are very excited to open in uh, uh, the first phase in 2025. So uh, thank you for that, and I'll turn it over. Thank you. Uh, Councilman McCampillo. Thank you, Chair. I just want to take 15 seconds to thank Mr. Gustavo de Arda at Caltrans and his staff and the engineers uh, over the past two years at Transportation Committee. Uh, former council member of Coronado, Bill Sankey, and I had been talking about uh, further pushing to get the uh, suicide barrier up on the bridge. And Mr. Dayada and his team uh, gave me a tour uh, to see just how far they've come. The amount of coordination across multiple jurisdictions is incredible. And so I just wanted to say uh, thank him and his team for doing their uh, greatest to keep people safe, uh, to help prevent suicides along the bridge, and to ultimately make sure that the workers that maintain the bridge are also kept safe through this process. So thank you very much. And I would encourage everyone to look at those plans and see them and maybe get a tour as well. Thank you. I love that. Just so far, I, um, when I used to represent Coronado, that was one of my top priorities. And I know that Vice Chair, Chair Lawson Weimer has absolutely taken that on as well. So I'm excited about the work that's being done. So thank you, Caltrans. Um, Mayor Wealth. Thank you, Chair Vargas. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak. You know, when the public speakers talked today, I thought they brought up a good point. I've been on SADAG for 12 years. We always had public comment in the beginning. I know the public comment has changed over the years because people are more engaged and we, we need to make more time. I personally am willing to come at seven or eight o'clock in the morning so we can make sure that the, all the meeting work gets done and that people have a chance to talk. I think that there is a, a an atmosphere of government not um, really giving people the freedom of speech and, and honoring the first amendment. And I think that that's a, that's a trap that we should not be involved in. I think it hurts the organization, and I think it's not the right thing to do. So whatever we can do to make sure that people have the opportunity to speak, I certainly would support that, and thank you for the time. 
You're welcome. And just for clarification, the um, the change in time was actually a request from one of your colleagues. I'm not going to out them because I don't want to, but a couple of your colleagues who come from North County specifically requested that we change the time of the meetings because of traffic, because of all the things that we're trying to address. Happy to make changes to the board meeting. Like I said, I, my whole Friday is open for today, so I'm happy to be here as long as we, ha we have to so that we can address all of the issues that we have. So with that, seeing no other comments, um, the next Absolutely. item I, before us is that we're going to go I, ahead I, and thank um yes ma'am just a, a brief a brief comment member comment um i i want to remind the board that we're queuing up for a three billion dollar project could be a four billion dollar project in del mar and we have these two conflicting projects inconsistent projects, if you will, going on right now um, that are both necessary. The $300 million planning for the tunnel underneath Del Mar and the $65 million Del Mar Bluff stabilization phase, whatever it is. And we um, yeah, that bluff stabilization is going to wind up with two miles of seawalls on our beaches and will highly negatively impact our beaches. Del Mar is not happy with this, but we are putting up with it. And I, I did want to just bring that back to the forefront for this board. Thank you. Thank you. And feel free to bring it back during the budget conversation as well. Um, seeing no other member comments, uh, we have a couple of ITOC members that are going, that I want to make sure we recognize today. I'm going to ask Dustin and Stuart, and uh, Michael can't join us today, uh, but if the rest can join us at the podium, I think that we as board members recognize the contribution of SANDEC ITOC members, and in particular the three outgoing members, Dustin Fuller, Stuart um, Halpern, and Michael Kinney. Both Dustin and Stuart started serving in ITOC in 2014, and Michael started serving in ITOC in 2019. So Michael also served in ITOC from May 2011 to May 2012. I know he's not here, but I wanted to make sure I share that with you. Um, the ITOC or Independent Taxpayer Oversight Committee plays a critical role in the oversight of our Transnet program. And I wanna thank each of you for your service on behalf of taxpayers of this region. And um, I also uh, just wanna say that I, I know that um, you are also volunteering in other committees. So we really, really appreciate your commitment to not only SANDAG, but also the region. So I don't know if you wanna say a couple of words. Yeah, um, just want to say that I was honored to serve on the committee. Um, there's a dedicated group of volunteers that serve on that committee. Um, I want to thank Sandag staff. They're always available for any questions. It's a lot of information that comes to us. Um, and then lastly, just wanted to say, I know a proposal for um, enhancements to the ITOC itself will be coming to you guys. I hope it's taken seriously and considered. Thank you. Just do it. Oh, um, it's been a long and eventful 10 years at Sandag. Um, as Dustin said, it's been an honor to serve. I also would really love to thank the staff. The staff has been amazing. There's no question we ever asked that went unanswered. The amount of work they do in providing us all information has been outstanding. It's very kind of you all to do this recognition, but I also like to echo Dustin's comments. Um, the ITOC's going to have some ordinance amendments coming to you guys. The audit committee is going to have some board policy 39 amendments coming to you guys. The plaques are really nice, but we'd really like you to pass the things that we're recommending to you. So thank you so much. Spoken like a true board member. <laughs> thank you so much, George. Thank, so thank you so much. Appreciate it. Sorry, to go ahead and give her a report. Uh, this week, I want to thank the members of SANDEC who were able to join me as we hosted the Ambassador of Mexico, uh, U.S. Este uh, US uh, Ambassador Esteban Montezuma here at SANDEC to uh, really have a conversation about how our communities can work together and also uh, really uh, having um, a real conversation about um, how we can do some more, more work together. Council General, I want to say, did a fantastic job is at convening this meeting and making sure that we were all part of it. Um, the other thing that I want to make sure that I share with all of you is that um, the UN Habitat has invited us uh, to really highlight the SANDAG, uh, by uh, SANDAG and the binational region, and we received an invitation to participate. We are one of 193 count countries uh, that are going to be showcased in this metropolitan experience, and so it's really 
uh, a privilege and a, an opportunity to really highlight the, the work of SANDAG and, and what we are doing here. And so uh, also I wanna announce that in July, we will be having a special joint meeting of the executive committee and the regional planning committee to hear an update from staff about state efforts underway for the next uh, arena process. I know that so many of you were really interested in this. And I think that the more we have a discussion, the more we work together, we can identify opportunities, um, especially some of the advocacy piece uh, at the legislative level, including uh, what Sandex participation is going to be in the statewide working group as well. And then um, last but not least, uh, next Thursday, bike anywhere day. So I think all of you received your uh, t-shirt, make sure you wear it. And then um, there's a pit stop in every city. Check out your maps in front of you and please plan to to stop by and, and use them. And uh, I can teach you how to ride a bike if you have never ridden a bike. I'm good at it. But anyway, so with that, um, did you know that there's a lot of people who don't know how to ride bikes? Yeah, that's a, it's actually a thing. So anyway, uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to public comments and ask Tessa if we have any public comments. I have uh, four public comments on this right. item, actually five. Um, one in person, Truth, please go ahead. Uh, Drew, before I go, hold on, Truth, I'm sorry. I forgot to let uh, Colleen give her presentation and then we're gonna have public comment. Go ahead, Colleen. Thank you, Chairwoman. Your CEO is um, not here today because he is celebrating his daughter's graduation from graduate school at USC. She's graduating with honors in public policy. So super proud of her and a big congratulations to um, Hassan and, and his family. And I know this is graduation season for lots of folks. We have at least five or six people from Sandag who are receiving graduate degrees. And I'm sure many of you have um, friends and family who are graduating from college and high school and so forth. So anyway, congratulations to all. I just had a few um, very brief updates to build on what the chairwoman said. Having the Mexican ambassador here in San Diego was terrific. And part of what he reported is that the Mexican side of Otay Mesa East is getting well underway and they expect to have substantial construction completed by the end of this calendar year. So that's very exciting news. Our team is continuing to work with the federal agencies to ensure that we have the resources and the, the staffing necessary to build our part of the border and working very closely to get that MOU signed so that we can get working together on what the design of the facility will actually look like. Um, Low Sand Rail Corridor, I think we reported to you all that we received a substantial grant from the state of California that will help fund almost half of the bridge in that low sand corridor. We've got a grant application in right now to the federal government, fingers crossed. We will hear about that within the next couple of months and then we can begin construction on that critical bridge piece in the low sand corridor. So very exciting, that'll be a bridge, double tracking. I think lots of people wonder like, why does it take so long to get from one place to another in that corridor? Some of it is because we the tracks aren't double and trains have to wait to pass one another. So that's very exciting as we continue to work on the, the design for the tunnel project. And then just to wrap up, um, there have been a few awards that Sandag um, received from the Construction Management Association of America. So we took home awards for both the Del Mar Bluff Stabilization Project as well as the Georgia Mead and Landis Bikeway project. So congratulations to the Sandag team members on that. Our Director of Diversity and Equity, Elaine Richardson, was also chosen as the Owner Honoree Award for her outstanding contribution. So congratulations to Elaine. And this um, week, we also received an award from Tyler Tech for our brand new open data portal. And many of you have asked, how do we get information data about the population and characteristics of the populations in my jurisdiction or in this particular community? And that is information that's available on the Sandag website. And that award was received um, this week. So that concludes my comments, Chairwoman, back to you. Thank you so much. Now we're gonna turn it over to public comment. Thank you, I have a total of six public commenters on this item. The first will be Truth, who will be followed by Ellen C. Hello again to my friend, Misinformation Minister and Budget Lover, Nora. This is your second budget day in a row, so you must be flying high like an acrobat. Well, this is Truth, the secret ringleader to counteract Circus Vargas. So Nora, working with 
the UN Habitat, the United Nations, a foreign agency dedicated to socialist sustainable development goals that are diametrically opposed to our American values. Anyone that reads the UN's Agenda 21 plan will find that they aim to push all of us away from urban and suburban areas and instead want us densely stacked and packed into stupid smart city mobility hubs without any freedom of mobility, everything electronically controlled and shut down, simple as a little kill switch. So I'm also going to ask as a friend that you please stop giving people like Rebecca a hard time about her legitimate questions and concerns about things like fraud that are definitely happening here. Thank you. Our next speaker is Alan C., who will be followed by Consuelo. Alan, please go ahead. Hi, good morning, Mike Chick. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, how many took the bus today? Obviously, hardly anybody. Okay, concerning your bike, the bicycle day, and you're claiming so many people don't ride bikes because they don't know how to ride a bike, that is hogwash. And all the pit stops you're going to be providing Drinks on tables are supplied by delivery trucks. Do you actually get it? Your climate religion nonsense is not helping the people when the people need delivery trucks for milk, eggs. That's going to go up if you pass the road use tax. Bicycles are toys we learned as a kid. Keep the toys off our streets. You and guidance, are you kidding me? You rep the people of San Diego County, not of the countries. And the millions who study Delmar track, you've had charts for years now. Now is the time to incorporate the shovels, move that track off the bluff next to the freeway, and stop risking our lives. Do your jobs, people. And the rest of your city council and mayor, start speaking up. Look at how short help the taxpayer from this tyrant. Thank you. Our next speaker is Consuelo, who will be followed by Blair Beekman. Consuelo, please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Okay, uh, that was great, Ellen. Yes, how many people did ride the bus to work today? <laughs> yeah, none. Um, well, I can't see, but anyways, uh, yeah, the bike thing, re-dick. And um, I'm just chiming in a little bit late. What I wanted to just, um, you know, <clears throat> convey was that there are tons of people at the border right now waiting to enter this uh, beautiful country that is no longer beautiful because of the agenda and everything that's happening and what you all are doing or not doing actually um, so you know it's time it's time to start to listen to the people it's time to start having a heart and it's time that, <sighs> thank you, your time has expired. Our next speaker is Blair Beekman, who will be followed by the original draw. Blair, go ahead. Hi, Blair Beekman here. Um, there's been some really interesting uh, international uh, relationships going on in San Diego in this past month. Uh, I think, you know, there's been recent immigration measures just recently trying to pass in, in Washington that are questionable. Uh, I think the work that's going on in San Diego right now can really do something incredibly positive for our future. Good luck in the continued efforts of a really good international dialogue with the Global South that's going on in San Diego right now. I think I just really work on real positive progressive things that I think can be agreeable to everyone if explained well, if you explain these things well to the public, really good luck to do that. And with my remaining time, uh, I wanted to comment on the bicycle issue. I know in San Jose, you know, there's an East San Jose and a West San Jose and the East San Jose has more uh, uh, immigrant population. It's harder to convey the ideas of the good ideas of bicycle rider issues. And uh, maybe that can be a way to, to talk about this issue better in the future. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is the original draw who will be followed by the final speaker, Mike Bullock. Please go ahead. 
Yeah. So it's so funny because, you know, you guys like to make fun of us when we talk about the whole UN Agenda 21. But yet, if people pay attention to what you say, then they'll understand that when you're being um, highlighted for the UN Habitat, I wonder why. It's because you're good little puppets. You're so good at pushing what they're asking you to push all to destroy humanity. You are very, very good. You're good. You're going to get a gold star and you guys can go in anywhere going to make you so special right because as long as you play those games and I love this whole bike day it's like you're going to give people little treats along the way we're going to give you water it's probably going to be sewer water we're going to give you a little snack just so you bike you think that's going to make people bike miles I mean like it's some kind of marathon that they're engaging in it's crap the way you guys I mean I expect all of you to be biking that day and if you don't don't ever fucking mention it again Thank you. Our final speaker is Mike Bullock. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's uh, kind of sad what's happened uh, here at Sandag and to hear the comments. Um, so I think I should start out by saying I definitely support the five big moves. I support uh, overall your mission. Um, I think this shows that yes, we do need to uh, teach climate literacy in the high schools. It's just science. Um, atmospheric CO2 does trap heat. It is at 420 parts per million. It, uh, for thousands of years, it was around 280 and that's where it should be. It should be at 280 parts per million. Um, yeah, a lot of speakers, I, I just, <laughs> I haven't heard this before and, and it's, it is very sad. Um, now, the comments that I, I want to make is that uh, Sandag is talking often about um, improving transit and uh, improving uh, sometimes uh, you. Thank you. Your time expired. That concludes the public comments. Thank you. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to our uh, consent agenda. Is there uh, public comments on the consent agenda? Thank you, Chair. Um, before we may have a motion on the consent agenda, I would like to announce for the record that the executive committee amended the draft agenda for May 26 to push item nine to a future meeting. Um, so that vote will be on the PAC actions as amended. Um, and I have one in-person speaker who would like to speak on items four and five, Truth, please go ahead, who will be followed by Alan C. Hello again. All right, item four. The Sandag Policy Advisory Committee's responsibilities in includes merging the regional plan, the regional transportation plan, the sustainable community strategy, the regional energy plan, and the multiple habitat conservation plan. That's transportation, housing, energy, and land. Got to cover the whole circle of control of life. Sift and analyze with data-driven deception, then divide and conquer with sub-area regional plans. The board of directors personnel panel, that's Lisa, John, and D minus Jack, sustain the firing of Santa Ana Department Admin Coordinator Evila Castellanos. Hopefully that won't end in another wrongful termination case like with Tommy Neal. Item five. Maybe Nora's other friends, not me, at CPS have recommended that the performance auditor should serve a three-year term instead of the usual two years. Get the hand-picked little Tovarish auditor minion in and keep them in longer this time. Just another decision the people don't get a say in, but sim somehow still end up paying a lot for. Thank you, your time expired. Our next speaker is Alan C, who will be followed by the original draw. Alan, please go ahead. So again, yeah, concerning this one minute, council, where are you? You guys are violating the Brown Act. I want to see charges press forward because this is unsat. Okay, let's go to item seven, road use tax. Chair Vargas, you have the power. You sit on the San Diego Pollution Board. You have the power to stop the road use tax. Why? Because you have direct comms to CARB, and we know you're trying to backpedal this road use tax without the vote of the people. Do you finally get it? 
that we are listening, we're watching. When you raise road use tax, it's going to raise the price of delivery trucks delivering our groceries. Two years of COVID shutdown. You didn't stop the tax, and now you want to backpedal as road use tax to for what? Kick us out of our cars? My daughter will never take the bus when she works at Greater Church. That's why I got her a second-hand vehicle, so she is safe. Nobody's taking your empty buses. Get it and start working for the people. And the rest of you council members, start stepping up and speaking for the people. We've had enough. Your time expired. Our next speaker was, is the original draw who will be followed by Blair Beekman. Please go ahead. Yeah, like Alan said, I'm not really sure what's going on with this whole one minute thing. You guys were just talking about how you could stay here all day and now you're still not changing something that you could on the spot. Um, so proof is in the pudding uh, there. And, you know, I do not consent nor do most of the people in this county and if they do they're confused about what's really going on but i don't consent to you combining any kind of entities to put us in 15 minute cities that's the whole thing it's like you being on the board of uh, bo the board of supervisors sandag and probably you're going to be the chair of mts too right nora because then you can ensure that all of these plans that you guys have are going to be put through Nobody's using your public transit. You're not even talking to all the people that would potentially use it to ask them what they want. You're going to specific communities. So what's going on here? If you had the people and you needed their consent, this none of this would be put through. But how much of are, are you guys getting on the side? Honora, how much are you getting paid to push this? How much? An aborted baby ripped apart limb by limb? Thank you, your time expired. Our next speaker is Blair Beekman, who will be followed by the final two speakers, Laura D. and then Consuelo. Blair, please go ahead. Hi, uh, Blair Beekman. Uh, am I guessing that one of your budget reports is a part of the consent calendar item today? Can I ask a procedural question? Well, because if it is, uh, I just wanted to quickly comment that, uh, you know, uh, I, I have concerns that uh, with, uh, policing issues uh, and technology. Of course, you know my feelings about open public policies and uh, the importance of accountability. And what I said earlier, like just explaining our good ideas to each other, if we learn how to do that better, uh, we'll be well on our way and trying to uh, bring together, you know, all the different parts of a uh, public comment that are going on right now. It takes effort and work. Good luck how to do that. We may be headed for an agenda 21, but we have to be clear what can be good human rights practices within that? And that's working the system. And good luck how we all work together towards that goal. Uh, it's with that said, you, you, you made a big new push uh, in, in upcoming policing budgets that I think you're going to have to really put in check. And it has to be better. Thank you. Your time expired. Our next speaker is Laura D, who will be followed by the final speaker, Consuelo. Laura, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is Laura. I live in the South Bay, and I'm very concerned about what's going on with this board, have been for many years. It looks like they're taking away inch by inch uh, our human rights by all of these laws, the, the bus lane, the bike lanes, the bus routes. I'm very concerned about this, and I want to encourage you board members, Sandag people, to speak up, those of you who don't agree with this, we are behind you. We are behind you 100% if you disagree with this Agenda 2030 stuff that's coming down to us. Uh, we want our cities to stay the way they are. We don't want these stack and pack housing units popping up everywhere all over the county. Um, we fought one here in, San, in Chula Vista and they had out of 171 units, nine of them went for low income housing. The rest of them are highly, highly expensive. This is not a solution for more housing. It's a ripoff. Please stop it. Thank you. Our last speaker is Consuelo. Please go ahead. Amen, Laura. Um, yeah, one minute, one minute to silence the people. That's the only Let's see, um, as far as, yeah, they're always, they're constantly in violation of every kind of act, Brown Act and so on. Let's see, to the brother that was claiming that it was so sad, all the comments. Well, apparently you're not paying attention. Turn off your TV, start looking outside, look around, man. It's getting bad and there's a reason. 
It's the people that are in this room. Um, science, science, yes. Science is never settled. Science should always be questioned. Very undemocratic. I'm done. That concludes this public comments. Thank you. Um, so just to my colleagues, uh, you know, I'm very clear as the chair of the board that uh, folks who are doing public comment need to be addressing the items that you see from three to five. Um, I have made it my prerogative not to stop folks from having the opportunity to share whatever they want to share, because I think in the interest of our uh, meeting and what we want to accomplish is just better to let people say what they have to say, even if it's not related to the item that is before it is not the common protocol. Um, if I was running any other meeting, I would do it differently. But I think for purposes of making sure that we're moving forward and getting the work done that we all are here to do, I'm just gonna continue to let people speak and then we're gonna move forward and continue the work that we need to do because we all got elected to do this work. So as we have the consent agenda item before us, I'm gonna turn it over to member comments to see if any of you have comments, but I do wanna address um, that we did have a very wonderful discussion. Well, that's what was one of my commitments um, uh, as during the board retreat and it was under the waiver of the independent performance auditor employment term limit. I wanna remind folks that it, at our last meeting, we had this conversation. So this item was brought to us at executive committee. Mayor Jones had some great recommendations about maybe making it four years instead of three years. And so I have asked our committee, uh, our uh, lead, um, I don't know your title, I apologize. The recruiter, the recruiters. I asked the recruiter to come back um, in a month to let us know what the best practices are, whether it's three, four, or five years in terms of how long an, a performance auditor um, and employment term limit should be. Uh, the recommendation to the board uh, that the board, the executive committee approved was a three-year term, but it doesn't mean that we can look at it uh, even further. So I just wanted to give you that update because I think it was a really wonderful thorough discussion that we've had and um, and Mayor Jones uh, decided not to continue with, um, she had made a friendly amendment, decided to uh, take the amendment back and agreed to move forward with that recommendation. So wanted to give you that update. With that, I'll open it up for member comments. Seeing none, we have a motion and, I'm sorry? No, we have a motion. Right. Um, I'll move to consent agenda. Okay. In a second. In a second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. And this should be working today. Sure. All right. That motion passes unanimously. Wonderful. All right. The next item on the agenda is item number six for the fiscal final fiscal year 2024 program budget. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Susan. And uh, we had a really also a really good discussion. My commitment again to all of you is that we actually have opportunity to have these discussions. I just want to make sure that before uh, we have Susan. Um, I want to make sure Susan addresses a couple of questions that were brought up during the executive committee into including the 40 plus million dollar discussion that we had, because I think Mayor Jones uh, brought up some really good points. Um, there's also this conversation about how uh, do things get prioritized as a board. And so I reminded our executive committee that in the past, uh, the way things have been prioritized, and many of you have been a board member before me for much longer than I have, and you've, and you've uh, followed this process for many years about uh, doing this based on direction uh, from an input from the board through the regional plan, the RTIP and the budget process. And so that's how it's been done before. Um, I'm happy to, uh, you know, engage in a conversation about moving forward, having a much more formal process about how we prioritize projects. But I want to remind folks that in many of these projects that are before you, there are contracts that have been already um, that have been already agreed to that all of many of you, because I know there's a lot of us who are new uh, at the board level, uh, agreed to, and that the budget represents more than 200 projects in support of the region's Sanex, and it actually, Sanex budget was actually passed uh, through each of the cities, the county, and the transit um, agencies, and there was a lot of community input that was um, included in this process. So um, I just want to make sure that we we level play, you know, we level the, the playing field that everybody is reminded of how we got here. And um, and I want to say thank you to the team, to Susan, to Melissa, and to Antoinette. 
Yeah. Um, for all the folks who've done so much work on this. And so hopefully if you had any questions before this meeting, you were able to, um, you know, get your, your uh, questions answered by this, by the team. And if, if you're not, you know, we'll have a moment to, uh, to discuss. We'll have Susan uh, present and answer some of the questions. Then we'll have public comment and then we're going to have member comments. So Susan, turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, I'm before, Susan. Before you start, Sharon, can I just make comment yeah. regarding what you just said? Mm -hmm. Then I'll and I'll make it quickly. Um, I think some of the comments that were made by Mayor Jones are reflective of the way we've done business in the past, like you said. And staff has pretty much always brought forward projects and put them in a certain order. Yeah. And some of the um, comments that we've had over the years is that uh, the board of directors is not in charge when we allow staff to have complete control. And so I think that's the movement that uh, I think a lot of people from the community would like to see is that their elected representatives have a little bit more control over the priority list. So I just kind of want to put that into context. And, and it's not saying that the staff certainly doesn't know what's good, but um, sometimes the uh, board of directors has a different um, idea of what is a priority. And I just want to kind of put that in perspective. No, and I think, so I'm happy to have the conversation. Let me go ahead and have the team uh, present and then let's have a conversation about that because one of the things that I proposed is that we actually have a much more thorough process. And I think it should be when we have our strategic planning discussions, right? We had a very thorough strategic plan conversation and we talked about, we were presented with different projects and then we all prioritize a lot of different things. I think, um, I think that is the, the best space for us to come up with our top priorities. And then from that begins the discussion of where the next steps are. And then I think when we had the conversation about what we can control, what we can control, what we do and what we don't do, I think that's the other piece that's extremely important because based on the projects that are before us, what can we move, what can we not move? And then what have we inherited as a board, right? So I think that's the other piece. Uh, I see some of you who are here for the first time as board members and as things change, I I think it's important to document um, how we got to where we are right now. And so I am in full agreement with all of you. And I do think that the board uh, needs to be leading those efforts. And so um, what I am, am uh, interested in is figuring out how we move forward with a budget that has been approved by so many already. And then there's a process that had been created for that people had been following for a long time. And I think now it's a new day at Sandag and we really are trying to ensure that this board is directing how we move forward. And I'm committed to doing that as well. So. Susan. Thank you. I'm Susan Huntington. I'm the Director of Financial Planning Budgets and Grants here at Sandag. I'm joined today with Melissa Kofelt, our Senior Director of Organizational Effectiveness. We're excited to be here today on behalf of the entire Sandag team requesting that the board adopt the final fiscal year 2024 annual program budget. Today is the culmination of months of work, both internally and externally with our stakeholders, our member agencies, and you. I hope that you are equally excited to support this comprehensive work plan going into action. Pending the board's adoption today, this will complete our meeting schedule on the fiscal year 24 budget. We started this journey back in February with the executive committee where we sought input on programs, projects, services, and activities that SANDAG intends to carry out in the upcoming year. In that discussion and in our discussion on the draft budget in March, we provided an overview of the agency's various responsibilities that are mandated by federal and state law or regulation or delegated to SANDAG through local agreement. Also in March, we presented the draft budget to the executive committee, the social equity working group and to the board. Following the executive committee's authorization, the draft budget was then distributed to our member agencies, the public, and the funding agencies for comment. Over the last six weeks, we have received comments from our funding agencies that have been incorporated into the final budget. Earlier today, we presented the proposed final budget to the executive committee and they recommended that the board adopt the budget. Pending adoption by the board, the budget would be distributed to the Federal Highway Administration, the Federal Transit Administration, Caltrans and SANDAG member agencies. The approved budget is required for the federal and state funding agencies to allocate funds to SANDAG for projects and for local jurisdictions and the transit operators to receive their transnet pass-through revenue. 
So I just wanted to begin with, um, I just wanted to point out that the proposed final budget very closely aligns with the draft budget, no major changes. So in the draft budget that we talked about back in March, $1.2 billion, the same is true in the final budget, $1.2 billion. Um, you'll see that there is a decrease in the capital budget. Um, we've made some refinements to project schedules in the capital program, which show a decrease in the ex estimated expenditure. However, the multi-year capital budget has increased as a result of successful grant awards secured since you were presented with the draft document. That final row there, um, the transnet revenue estimated in the final budget is consistent with the transnet estimates approved by the board in February and used for the draft budget. So there are no updates to the pass-through amounts planned for the local jurisdictions and the transit operators. Given the unprecedented local sales tax collection, the allocation to local jurisdictions is the highest it's ever been. I'd also like to remind the board of some information we shared back in March. And in addition, at your chairs, each of you has been provided uh, with a printout of attachment one, that's our budget in brief, which provides a high level summary of each of the program components, their corresponding revenue, cost, and major work efforts in the coming year. So the SANDAG budget is $1.2 billion. Capital projects account for nearly half of the expenditures. Roughly 20% of the pie, that lower, lighter pink piece, is the transnet pass-through. Local jurisdictions estimated to receive $136 million in the coming year for their local street and road program infrastructure, and the transit operators $101 million for their operations. Over half of the revenue used to support the three budget components, our OWP, our capital program, and our operations and services come from state and federal sources. Most of these are dedicated grants for specific projects and work efforts. Trails and Transnet sales tax accounts for less than a quarter of the revenue we use for our projects. Also in March, we provided opportunities for the board and the public to learn more about the status of the agency's priority projects, as well as the diverse and important work SANDAG is involved in, which will create impact around the region, both at your board retreat and as part of a special workshop during the, board, the regular board meeting. So to go over some of our highlights within our capital program, significant work will continue in fiscal year 24 on our regional priority projects, including Losan, Otay Mesa East, and the airport transit connection. In addition, SANDAG is leading several initiatives focused on mobility options, safety, and access. The Youth Opportunity Pass is fully funded for youth 18 and under through fiscal year 24. We'll be working with our partners to identify a permanent funding source to keep transit free for youth. We've also started the planning work for the Blue Line Express and San Ysidro Mobility Hub, as well as the new Purple Line Rail Connector. We're continuing investment in upgrading our toll facilities and looking for e efficiencies and process improvements. The budget also includes funding for the public safety efforts at SANDAG through the Argus and Criminal Justice Divisions, including services provided to local cities in the county. The strategic initiatives reflect the projects that staff are undertaking to improve internal agency operations. Resources have been incorporated into the fiscal year 24 budget to support these efforts. Using the people processes technology framework, goals designed to strengthen and streamline our business practices and achieve greater levels of accountability and transparency have been identified. Examples include implementation of a new ERP system, which will replace several antiquated systems for core agency functions such as accounting, budgeting, payroll, and human resources, and also increasing and expanding training and development for employees. So as I showed you up top, there's not uh, substantial changes between the draft and the proposed final budget. Um, I'll run through these next couple slides kind of quickly. The um, information is contained in attachment to all the kind of ins and outs and refinements um, by project number. So our overall work program um, uh, increased by $2.2 million. That's a change of only 2.3%. 
This increase is mainly due to the addition of a new central mobility hub and connections planning project to study how people move through and into the downtown San Diego urban core. The funds for, the, for this new project are coming from budgetary savings in our in other comprehensive multimodal corridor plan pro projects. So I just wanted to point out this new project is contained in the budget in chapter two. It's chapter two, page 23, and it shows a budget for $1 million for the planning project. And then we also do have a capital project, um, it, the, which is located in chapter four. I'm sorry, chapter five. It's chapter five dot four slash 17. And so that's where you're going to find your capital project, which is separate and distinct from the planning project. Uh, within our um, regional operations, uh, there was also a change here, $2.1 million decrease. This uh, decrease is mainly due to scope refinement and finding savings on contracts. Um, and then within the capital budget, this is what I talked about before, $17 million is taken out of fiscal year 24, moved into fiscal year 25. The multi-year budget increased by $127.5 million. Having said that, $93 million of that is from projects that we thought were going to close out in the current fiscal year that, that are not. So we need to carry them forward into FY24 um, for their final closeout activities. We were also able to add funding to design for the Otay Mesa East Port of Entry, new state funding for University Bikeway and new federal funding uh, for Bayshore Bikeway. I'll hand it over to Melissa. Thank you, Susan, and good morning. Good to be here this morning and talking about our FY24 budget. So in addition to the information that Susan has shared about agency programs and, and projects, I'd like to highlight a couple of elements from our operational and uh, personnel budgets. So our administrative and uh, business expenses for next year are estimated at $29 million, or 2.9% of the total proposed budget. This includes $750,000 for board-related activities and also includes $1.4 million for the Office of the Independent Performance Auditor. The balance is allocated to labor costs, operating expenses, equipment, supplies, as well as consultant and vendor services. So as indicated up on the slide, the key changes between the draft and final budgets included the addition of $50,000 for executive search services to conduct the recruitment for the IPA position, as well as a slight reduction in IT maintenance costs. Moving on to our personnel budget, um, I think many of you would agree uh, the importance of attracting and retaining talented employees and ensuring that the agency's programs and projects are appropriately resourced is of high importance to the organization. SANDAC has approximately 420 full-time employees, as well as 30 to 40 part-time trainees and interns, and staffing needs are evaluated on an ongoing basis. In developing the FY24 budget, positions and staff hours have been strategically allocated to priority areas, and eight new positions have been proposed to be added. Move to the next slide. There are, um, these new positions are supported by new funding sources, for example, the Low Sand Realignment Project, or they tie to priority needs within the organization. Susan mentioned previously the ERP being a significant effort. With respect to uh, compensation and benefits, uh, several recommendations have been included in the budget to ensure, ensure Sandag maintains a competitive program here. These recommendations include a 3% market-based increase to the overall salary range structure, not to employee salaries per se, but to the overall structure. Uh, the other recommendation is a 5% compensation adjustment pool, and this would be used for two purposes. One, to provide a 2% cost of living to all eligible employees, and the balance used to provide merit increases to employees based on their year-end performance evaluations. This 5% compensation adjustment pool the, uh, the total cost of the compensation adjustment pool is approximately $3 million. So this wraps up our presentation and I'd like to um, um, summarize the recommendation 
that's before you. The Board of Directors is asked to adopt Regional Transportation Commission RTC Resolution Number RTC-2023-05, adopting the final FY 2024 program budget. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to public comment, and then I'll have um, member comment. Thank you. Um, just so the public understands that now that the item presentation has ended, we will no longer call on um, any public speakers who raise their hands at this time. I have two public speakers in person for item six. Truth, please go ahead. Hello, here we have a budget of 413 pages that, let's be real, nobody read. Uh, the total cost next year for the Sandag Board of Directors is $743,000, including $245,000 in services, $180,000 in board compensation, and $193,000 in miscellaneous. Sandag gets a total of over $244 million in federal debt dollars. It seems the real debt starship captain isn't Hassan, but the federal government. Sandag's wasting money on what they call smart connections to convince people of what they feel are right-sized transit options to go along with their connected network of right-sized mobility hubs. What they've dictated is the smartest use of our taxpayer money. Thank you. Money will be wasted on more sustainable slime green bike lanes. There's a vision zero to use injured pedestrians as an excuse for a vision of zero cars. And they're keeping the weighted vote in order to keep the county and the city of San Diego in control of everyone else. They've made themselves the head of the Council of Governments to completely take away representation from we the people. Thank you. Your time expired. Our next public speaker is Dr. Bailash, who will be followed by our first virtual speaker, Alan C. Dr. Bailash. Thank you, members of the board. I try, I'll try to make this uh, as brief. It's a long meeting. Uh, I want to thank the uh, board members and the speaker, particularly, I mean, the uh, chair particularly uh, for recapping and uh, purposing everything that we do and focusing us. I think it's really, really great. Um, last Friday or actually a few meetings, something came to my mind about the mobility hubs and I support passage of the budget and the uh, amendment for um, additional uh, funding for the uh, study of the mobility hubs. And I hope I get this in time. Um, I, I would maybe think about mobility and splitting it into two parts. There's people mobility, then we want to get places. It doesn't matter where how we get there or the vehicle or whatever, and convenience is a part of that, cost is also part of that. But there's also goods and services, and uh, my time is up. I just want to say that perhaps it should be split into locations for goods and service versus people. 3322900 is what this speaks Thank to. Thank you. Your time Thank expired. You. Our first, our first virtual speaker is Alan C., who will be followed by Consuelo. Alan, please go ahead. Yeah, concerning the housing grants, you've got multiple outreach programs, electric car charge station for the rich. Who decides who gets our hard-earned paychecks and yet more taxes? Your favorite, favorite groups, the so-called nonprofits, the unions, the Democrat operatives, such as Jewish Family Center, that are actually funding your own re-elections. This is so corrupt, people, and I still don't hear anybody speaking up, just letting it slide all through. Last week, I saw a woman at a supervisor meeting with three kids in tow lose her six-month housing voucher. Yet our own supervisor, Anderson, what did he do? He jumped up to renew her housing, and yet no effort to get her out of her horrible cycle. What about them children? What do they be like when they grow up? She needs a job, as well as every time you're trying to help the homeless, they need jobs. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, Pursuit is so critical. We need to pursue. We need the challenge. It gives us a sense of self-worth. When are you going to start taking looking at that account to actually where the people can help themselves? I yield back. Thank you. Our next speaker is Consuelo, who will be followed by Mike Bullock. Consuelo, please go ahead. Let's not forget whose money it is. It's we, the tax pedal. They bleed us dry and tax us even when we die. We know that this government is not a government for the people. They're a corporation. Therefore, they will never listen to us. We are merely collateral to them. 
the status slave staff who carry out their projects. You better start paying attention and question what in fact is going on. The future generations will pay dearly for your lack of interest in their corruption. Where's the thing? It's in the corner of the cabinet. What corner of the cabinet? The one with the pendant daughter? Yes. I'm done. I couldn't find it. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mike Bullock, who will be followed by Paul Hankin. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mike Bullock. I live in Oceanside, as you know, and uh, I don't always say this, but I am a retired satellite systems engineer. I worked for Lockheed Martin for 36 years. I have a degree in electrical engineering and a master's degree. Um, I very much appreciate uh, all of the information that was provided by the staff. Uh, as a member of the public, I uh, see my job is uh, to try to attempt to say some things that weren't said. Um, I appreciated the sales tax collection uh, uh, assessment there and um, happy to see that, that uh, you, you appear to have uh, good funding there. But uh, transportation really is about a time and money. And uh, certainly the gasoline tax was a great idea uh, when it was first conceived because mostly wealthy people drove. Now we have very low income people that drive and we need uh, to get rid of the gasoline tax. We have good uh, technology. It should be the road use charge. It should be means-based. Low-income people should pay. Thank you, your time expired. Our next speaker is Paul Hinken, who will be followed by the original draw. Paul, go ahead. You are self-muted. Oh, Hinken, send egg is too big for it to snore. Please rein it in. Mission is transportation planning, not city planning. I am concerned about the failed audit, exclusion of dissenters, and now of passing proposals with four votes rather than a majority. That's not democratic, it's a public group, not a private club. But forcing people into the dirty, disgusting, and dangerous buses won't work. Their frequency is not often enough, they move too slowly, they stop too often. You want a trolley going into TJ? Good way to let gangs and drugs into this area and driverless EVs? Crazy people. How far will you let their waste, fraud, and abuse go before you close the money taps and tell them to get lost? And 2% cost of living raise? That's disgraceful. Sandag seems to be run by narcissistic bullies who can't withstand any dissent. You should have said no to it long ago. Your time expired. Our next speaker is the original draw, who will be followed by the final two speakers, stakeholder 1776 and Blair Beekman. Please go ahead. Only $1.2 billion, you guys. I feel like that is a little bit low because we know Tijuanera, Nora loves budget. So Nora, I feel like you were kind of you know, aiming low on this one. But as we know, you guys love to say that the money comes from the government. And if what was so was reality, like how the government is the one that is supposed to pay taxes, not the people, then you would be right. And the money would come from the government. And then sure, you know what, let them decide how they use it. But it comes from the people. And you guys usurp those funds, basically steal them from the people, mismanage them, but it's intentional because you are using it to further enslave us. Therefore, we're funding our own enslavement and you're depriving every right given to us by God, not by you, but by God. And so therefore you are under 18 USC 241 and 242, depriving the citizens and conspiring against their rights under the color of law, their federal offenses that come with jail time. Continue to go down this path and see where it leads you. Thank you, your time expired. Our next speaker is stakeholder 1776, who will be followed by the final speaker, Blair Beekman. Please go ahead. Radio check. Loud and clear. Fantastic, oh, sorry, mic check. Uh, the San Diego Associ Association of Government serves as the forum for regional decision-making, acting as the Metropolitan Planning Organization for San Diego County. What is an MPO? A metropolitan planning organization is an agency created by federal law, the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1962, which mandated the formation of MPOs, 
Paul Ankin asks why Sandag is engaged in city planning just a few minutes ago. Under the federal law established in the 1973 Highway Act and the Mass Urban Mass Transit Act that uh, further expanded uh, the scope of these MPOs. Uh, I just wanted to say Sandag is just a slick ruse designed to bully local governments into compliance. It's designed to bully you into giving up your self-governance. Read your city charters, people. Read them why are your, your cities incorporated in the first place. Thank you. Thank you. Our final speaker is Blair Beekman. Please go ahead. Hi, Blair Beekman here. Thank you for allowing public comment from myself. Uh, I wanted to comment uh, on these budget items that uh, thank you, uh, previous speakers. Uh, I, I understanding the, I, it's my hope that we can really work on uh, 2030 RENA goals uh, now <laughs> and just put its good efforts and ideals now and just be talking about it. And I think that can facilitate something really uh, good happening in the next few years. Um, I, the work I do with tech accountability is really important and the work we do at the local level is meant to invite care and uh, how do we make decisions not based on harming each other. And it's that sort of thinking that I think can develop uh, and build to a national and international level. And that's the goal, uh, it can be a good goal of this work that I'm doing. Uh, with my remaining time, it's my uh, hope that with the recent uh, police practices going on, uh, we have to balance, reimagine ideas. We can't just be all pushing uh, police, police, a new future police again. We have to be balancing. Thank you, your time expired. And that concludes the public comments. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and open up to our, our board members. Uh, first, uh, Mayor Minto. Thank you for this opportunity again. A lot, of, a lot of work here, especially as a uh, second, um, you know, go around at this, so to speak. Um, I did have some questions, and I know that if you want to dive down deep into that uh, budget, you can find these answers, but I thought that I would ask them so that the public at least could hear them if they didn't have time to go and dig deep. And um, one of my questions was regarding the uh, transit, uh, airport transit connection, central mobility hub. And um, how, how much is, uh, or I mean, are we on target with that? Where are we at in the process? Our team, Ryan. Good morning, Brian Kohut, uh, Sandag Director of Strategic Projects. Um, right now, we are working to finalize an airport uh, connect transit connection uh, concept study. Uh, that study is looking at, um, you know, the, uh, the various types of transit connections that we can make to connect the airport to our transit system. We are looking to complete that study and then report back to the board on June 23rd along with a general program update. Okay, and uh, did that uh, study include members of the public? Uh, the study is a technical study. Um, it's an engineering study. So we're gonna be, we're looking at the various leading transportation technologies, trolley, enhanced bus service, and automated people mover systems. We are looking at um, various alignments to the north of the airport, to the south of the airport. Um, we're gonna be coming back with information on cost, ridership, constructability, and then it's our intention to share that with the board here. And then we'd like to share that information with the public, receive input before you know, coming back to this board to ask for direction as to what project or projects we should advance into environmental. Okay, thank you. And then another question was on the uh, transit equity and youth pa opportunity pass. Um, how much uh, has been spent on that? And do, do we know that in that program? And, and I don't know if uh, you, you have that right in front of you or not, but maybe over the last year or even the last two years, because I think they're in the third year of it, if I remember correctly. I can look it up, yeah. Okay, uh, you can get back to me on that later. Way. I'm just... One is uh, I'm interested in how much we're spending on that as we look towards the future and um, where we're going to be developing a revenue source to uh, continue that program. Mm -hmm. 
So excuse me, maybe Susan, if you just explain what the budget amount is for the next coming year, because it costs a certain amount a year to do the 18 and under, if we gave you that number. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, I understand that. I'll take that. But then I guess uh, uh, later on, I'm interested in how much we've actually spent over since the uh, uh, we've done the program. So um, my understanding, and I don't have the numbers right in front of me, is that the cost per year was at, um, estimated to be roughly around $8 million per year. And um, we did not spend all of that in the current fiscal year, so we pushed some of it into FY24. We augmented um, so that we could um, uh, have that program going all the way out to the end of 2024. Do you have a dollar amount? Oh, we've already spent nine million. Okay. okay, so we're actually out of the eight million or a million over. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, going to uh, sticking with the trolley or MTS, I guess the question would be is how much money uh, goes through during because if there is a certain amount of pass through to MTS mm -hmm. for their operation, uh, how much money do we provide them for operation versus what they may be? Um, collect themselves or raise themselves through other revenue sources? Do we have that? So for Transnet, we, um, in the budget, is $101 million that we're going to pass through, not specifically to MTS, but to both the transit operators. They get um, funds directly from the federal government, and what we pass through for operations is just a small piece of the, of the revenue that they use for their purposes. Okay, can we uh, maybe at a later date get maybe what that actual number is that we, the dollar amount versus um, percentage. And then, um, give me just a second here, this is a long document, so. Um, we're talking about, uh, the, I'm looking at the total price and the timeline maybe on the uh, San Diego River Trail uh, that's through the Carlton Oak segment. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't have this for you earlier. I just, was, uh, as we were talking through this, I just started making notes. Okay. You're looking for the other questions and you're looking for the answer. I just want to remind folks that the County of San Diego actually did allocate 1.5 million. Uh, that was my initiative that we pushed and the board unanimously supported. Uh, that is actually part of the $9 million. And then the other part is that we've actually had, I think it's uh, 6 million total rights since the beginning of the program and um, 600, I think, uh, rights a month, right? 600,000 rights a month and 50,000 of those unique rights. So I just want to make sure that's like, I want to make sure I share that because I think that we are, we've been true partners in this process and uh, and it's working. So and not that, lobbying you, just informing you. That That's great because yeah. that's <laughs> where it's going to eventually get to is that, um, is it just our money or is there a um, collaboration of, of money, so to speak? And then, um, and I don't know, this, this might not be under the budget, but uh, we're talking about the uh, coast canyons and trails, State Route 52. What, did, what part of State Route 52 is that going to cover? And, Do you want to talk about that? Antoinette has that. And, and I'm, I'm curious about trails on State Route 52. What does that mean? So that is the name for that particular um, CMCP, and it covered the entire 52 corridor. So there, we're expecting to put a trail along that entire 52? I, I, I think if we're going to call it something, I mean, because where do you put trails along the 52? There are a number of projects proposed in that CMCP. Some of them include things like new bike paths and trails. There's also the roadway improvements. Um, there are a number of multimodal corridor improvements. I, I believe that that um, CMCP is still open for public comment um, and is just being finalized. Okay, I, I was just curious because, it, you know, staff, uh, they, they, put the information in here, put down, uh, you know, like CMCP, Coast Canyons and Trails, and then it goes SR52. 
you're going, okay, well, what does the freeway have to do with that? And so I just want to make sure that people understand where, where we're coming on that. So it's, and the, then, it's the freeway and the surrounding community. So it's that entire corridor. Okay. And then I'll, I think I've got more questions on the next item. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, Council member Jack Fisher. Thanks, Chair. Um, you know, my comments aren't specific to this budget, but kind of the budget process as we go forward. Um, in the first page of the budget in brief, it talks about the key initiatives, and it talks about, you know, part of the mission is the, the impact of the quality of life that we have. And then the final part, it says, by partnering with community members from business to elected officials, we can ensure that all of our efforts are grounded in what's important to our communities. And, you know, as I looked across on the other side where the window says that, you know, San Diego's mission is serving the people of the San Diego region. Um, and, and my comments are in regards to the transit, the pass-through that goes to the local municipalities. Um, you know, I found out that a minor portion of that is allowed for uh, road maintenance and upkeep. And the majority portion is for uh, rent larger renovations and, and new roads. And, you know, I don't think we can lose sight that some of the roads in our region are poor. They're not maintained. And I think it's important for local municipalities. And again, I, I, I don't pick on it, but I know they have the most amount of roads that I drive on is the city of San Diego. Um, you know, I'd like to see us be able to use some more of these funds to, to improve the roads. I know that this agency spends a lot of time on mobility hubs and all different ways to, uh, to have people have different opportunities to, to, tra uh, to commu um, commute. I got two words together. Um, but I think it's important that we don't forget there are the majority of people in this county drive cars. Mm -hmm. They really do. And I think that those, their needs, their rights shouldn't be uh, over uh, governed by, by the fact that these, these transnet funds, I know they're specific, they have specific uses that are regulated. Um, but perhaps we look at this in the future of how to make it so that some of these roads that um, are, are terrible to drive on that, you know, the local municipalities can, can use them for improvements. It's a lot cheaper to do maintenance than it is to completely replace and renew. I'm not a construction expert, but I can tell you, you know, fill in some potholes and put some slurry on them um, probably is a lot cheaper than creating a whole new road. And, you know, again, I, I hope that we can take a look at that for our future budget cycles. I think uh, you just said uh, music to uh, Mayor Gloria's ear, so uh, I'm sure he would be really happy to see her. So I'm going to turn it over to Vice Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, let me start by uh, motioning to um, to approve this item. Uh, just one thing I did want to highlight. A lot of times we look at the budget and we think about what's not in there or things that we'd like to have um, instead of what's in there. I do want to call attention to the amount of federal and state funding that Sandag pulls down for this region, it's not a little bit of money. And that does, doesn't just fall out of the sky. I think it's over a hundred million dollars uh, that's been awarded to this region. That's a byproduct of, it's a product of work um, done by the employees of this agency. And I think um, it, that bears us expressing some appreciation for. Um, that is not, a, we're not just, you know, kind of birthrighted all of that money. Um, we go and we win it. And I, I think that that's something that we should be proud of, express appreciation for. It doesn't mean there aren't improvements to be made. I do think that part of this conversation has illuminated some of the ways that the presentation of the budget and the process for, for producing the budget could be improved, including making it more clear what is restricted and what is uh, not restricted. Um, would love for every San Diego pot, pothole to be filled, um, but I don't think that the 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 allocation of the funds would uh, would allow for that necessarily. Um, and we also know that one of the ways to preserve roads is by reducing uh, the amount of 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 of, of, of traffic on those roads. And one of the ways of doing that is by providing folks safe alternatives, a safe, efficient, and and a cost effective alternative. So. Um, again, I, I appreciate some of the ways that this conversation has uh, made it clear in that there are ways to improve the process, to improve the presentation. I also think that we should um, provide some appreciation for the, the positives that we see. Uh, I'm certainly grateful to Sandeg staff um, for being as effective as, as they are at bringing this region, um, uh, you know, our fair share of dollars 
uh, especially for critical projects like Lausanne. Um, so with that, that, that concludes my motion. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Councilmember Musco. Thank you, Chair. I have a, a couple of issues, um, and you mentioned this at the executive committee, and you're, I would say, if, you, if I don't mind characterizing it, your general disdain for doing business this way, because we always have, and, and I agree with that, and that really is kind of one of the issues that uh, we found in the auditor's report that will be come, coming forth to this board and probably this afternoon in the audit committee meeting. Um, I, I think there are several ways we can address that. One would be to not wait until this point in time. We have a mid-year reconciliation. We get a quarterly reports. Um, I know some of the discussion this morning had to do with the prioritization of certain projects. And I would not look at any of those and say that they're not priorities, but maybe how we characterize them as priorities. Um, we have a big issue right now with Lindbergh Field. We've had it for a long time. We have a single runway. And we every time we have that big with discussion, Lindbergh Field, the airport. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Right. I'm sorry. So I, I part of the it. central mobility hub, which is a significant component of this, this discussion this morning, has to do with how do we get people from there to here? So I, I don't know why we're not exploring in greater depth since we're, we've spent now over $40 million trying to discern where we're starting and where we're ending. We're not looking at alternatives to kind of mitigate that whole issue with the brick field. We've looked at brown field repeatedly. That comes up. Ideas come forward. And then it gets dismissed because we've always done it this way. And Dr. Bailish actually brought up a good point, and it was one of my notes. A, a, a significant amount of traffic comes through of the border crossing. And we've highlighted the Otai border crossing, East Mesa, as a great way to move goods and services cross border. We have an airport down there. Why are we not looking at that as the focus point? We could still maintain Lippert Field, but we really need to decentralize our whole concept of what we're talking about with central mobility to satellite facilities. We're talking about VMT and how we all pay a penalty. I don't know how many people live in the city of San Diego that commute to Lemon Grove from work, but I know there are a lot of people in the suburban communities in this county that come into this region because that's where the employers are. So I think if we took a general mindset of decentralization, it would help us with our VMT. It would give us greater focus on where we identify a central mobility hub and where it needs to terminate, not as a single point, but multiple points. We have a blue line that's very robust. I, I'm sure I don't think we'd get an argument from Chula Vista or uh, my colleagues from San Diego about extending a line to the east. Uh, my wife took a trip to Mexico last month I drove her down right to the front door of CBX. Five minutes later, she's through the processing, and I picked her back up. It's an extremely efficient process. The reason we have issues here at Lindbergh Field is because we are congesting everybody into a single location that really is no longer effective for moving people. Um, we have great employers. Sereno Valley, I think, is the number one area for employers, and along the 78 corridor with my North County friends, a significant number of employers but we all pay a price for VMT because we're forcing people to live outside of those areas because we don't decentralize. We have spent a lot of money, and this is really a, a sore point, and I share it with Mayor Jones, who had to leave, that we have spent a significant amount of money, over $40 million, on a process to identify a central mobility hub based on an assumption that will have to be here, and I don't believe that it has to be here. I think we need to reprogram those dollars and that perspective outside of the city of San Diego proper, downtown, not to take it away from San Diego, because I think wherever we go, we're probably gonna be in the city of San Diego and that's fine. But it would help everybody along the way with their VMTs, the ease of movement of, of goods and services. And as we, what was the word you used, Jack? Transport each other? Yeah, commute, thank you. Uh, it, it just seems a more efficient way to relieve that congestion. Then we can reprogram some of those dollars to improve the roads in the city of San Diego that would uh, make Mayor Gloria very happy. Um, I have to look though at the money we've spent and the money we're looking to continue to spend in the budget for the central mobility hub. And I know chair, you mentioned this morning that the specific dollars of how they've been allocated and appropriated will be forthcoming. I haven't seen them yet. I know it's not a snap your fingers that it has to happen, but because of that, I cannot support that. It's just, it's too significant a portion although we're looking at a $1.2 billion program budget. Um, I think this is a, ultimately a planning and transportation agency, and we need to focus on that and get out of this mindset where we have to continue lockstep in a single direction, sit down, look at it, and be a little more open and regular with our perspectives 
on priorities and our budgeting process. Thank you. Completely understand and it's your prerogative, sir. I, I just uh, wanna make sure that I remind everyone that there was a budget draft that was presented to all of you uh, with, um, I think over a month or more, uh, March 24th, right? And there's been a lot of discussions from community members, uh, your councils uh, rec made recommendations, uh, fiscal funding agency. So I just wanna make sure that we remind everyone, this is not the first time we have this conversation. Everybody has the prerogative to vote the way their conscience uh, votes. But I will tell you, I love the fact that you brought up CBX because I was a little field rep for the local congressman during that time. And Jack is council members laughing because you remember when people said that there was going to be only, uh, you know, the, the narcotraficantes and all the bad people were going to be crossing. And there was going to be drugs all over the place and all sorts of nonsense. Uh, and it was visionaries, elected officials that were visionaries, whatever you thought about them or not, who invested in programs like Centri and CBX that your wife gets to go on there now and use it. But let me tell you, nobody believed that that project, I mean, I worked for the congressman for five years and left and worked all sorts of different places and came back. And that did not open up until after many, many years, after a lot of uh, misinformation and misguidance. So I think that the beauty of doing the work that we do at Sandag and the region and the regional lens is what's really, really powerful. So um, I am committed to looking at the budget process. I think uh, to um, to emphasize what the vice chair has mentioned, uh, you know, I've only been chair since January. That's not an excuse. Uh, there's the process and how things have been done. I think that um, legislation has allowed us to have an independent auditor that has made some recommendations. We're going to be looking at some of the stuff in October. So the process is well underway. My commitment to all of you is that there's transparency, that there is accountability, there is engagement from the community, more importantly. And when we had that conversation at the retreat and at the board uh, uh, begin, begin earlier this year, I think that's where we should have a lot of this conversation about like, hey, we need to change process, we need to change systems, because many of you have been on this board for many years and have accepted, accepted the process the way it has been. And so it's a new day at Sandag, we're gonna move forward and we're gonna make sure that we really look at uh, process and systems and make those recommendations. Because I actually think it's a great idea to be able to do that. And so um, again, to the point of what is restricted and not and moving things forward. So thank you for your comments, duly noted. Um, Councilmember Duncan. Thank you. Uh, just a brief question, and I know you mentioned it. I'm sorry if I didn't um, fully digest it. So in regard to the one of the major changes, the new OWP to focus on planning for downtown central mobility hub, you mentioned that was that one million allocation was funded by savings from another area. If you could just help me out with understanding what area they came from and or if that involves not doing something else in that area. Certainly. So um, originally we had established roughly 12 corridors within the CMCP program. That's the um, uh, multimodal corridor programs where we're doing the planning by corridor. So uh, originally it was a $40 million program, 12 different corridors. Uh, we have delivered roughly a handful, half of those um, corridors. And through that process, we have developed processes, templates, outreach strategies, and we realized that that amount, that $40 million to cover all of these corridors is not needed. And so we've downscoped the um, CMCPs, which are remaining, um, so that we can um, make use of what we've learned throughout what we've done with the first six, roughly six that have already been completed. So we will continue to do the CMCPs on those other corridors. We just don't think that they're going to cost as much. And so we downscoped those uh, in the budget and we were able to capture those savings uh, for this other um, planning effort. For the down uh, for the downtown connections. Okay, thank you very much. It's very helpful. So it's fair to say, right, that there was there wasn't a particular project or something that was cut. Obviously, based, it was the the scope. So right. So in attachment two, there were four projects within the CMCP program that um, have a budget reduction. Thank you, Mayor Minto. Yeah, sorry to make a second run of this, but don't apologize, sir. That's what we're here for. <laughs> but, um, I, I I think I'd be remiss in um, actually pointing this out because we've talked about it so much over the last couple three years, 
And that is that uh, in this budget is um, improvements for um, the I-15 state route, 78 connectors, and uh, 78 H, uh, uh, SR 78 HOV lanes, the I-15 state route, 78 connectors, and um, state route 94, 125, uh, state route uh, 52, I-5 uh, optional improvements, and then the I-805 sound walls and auxiliary lanes. And I also understand that there was $12 million put in the budget to begin that truck climbing lane out of uh, Santee over the 52. So we've complained an awful lot about those and they're in the budget, they're funded. And I guess the only thing I can say is let's get her done so that uh, we won't be have to talk about them anymore. So is that a second to the motion? Uh, sure, why not? Fantastic. So we have a motion and a second, please vote. Is it working? Is it working? There you go. <laughs> All right. That motion passes with 13 yeses and six noes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I, and I really appreciate the discussion and uh, this is only the beginning. Like I said, uh, I am fortunate to be your chair for two years, unless something else happens. But um, but with that, I will make sure that we look at the budget process and a couple of you have recommendations and we're gonna uh, take that into consideration and uh, come up with opportunities for everybody to be part of it before it actually gets out um, as a draft. Um, with that, so I wanna have a conversation with all of you about this um, because it's 12-10. And I know many of you um, have time certains uh, that you have to leave. And so um, I wanna ask, we, have, we had the first initial discussion on the 2025 regional plan workshop uh, at the last meeting. Today, we were scheduled to have the workshop part two, which included a presentation from the, the, the team, the staff members, and then we were gonna have an opportunity for us to participate and engage. So there's two things, we still have time, Right, we still have time. Uh, if if we move this item to the next uh, meeting, uh, we're still going to be able to be okay. Or do we stay and we continue to do the work now? Um, I, I want to leave it to the uh, pleasure of of the board. Yes, sir. Uh, Ma'am Chair, I have a hard out right now. Okay. <laughs> and I have an amendment for whatever motion's coming. Okay. So I personally would prefer that we push it off to the next meeting. Okay. And then we can make sure that, okay, is that everybody good with that? Yeah. And just, Chair, I know it's a, it's just maybe unique to me within the board, but I have the audit committee at 1230. So if we get too far That's into here. this, I would miss one or the other. Okay. So prefer to move All right. It. You see, I love consensus, I love engagement. I just wanna say again, thank you so much for everything that you have done and for participating and for the discussion. Meetings are taking longer because I think the board is really uh, engaged and I really just wanna say thank you for that. Thank you for approving our budget. Uh, I am now going to go ahead and move the regional plan workshop to the next board meeting. If you all could plan accordingly so that the next board meeting could be maybe a little bit longer, maybe an hour at the most, um, I will try to manage with the team to make sure we don't have executive meeting at the next board meeting, so we'll adjust it so we can have all of the time that is necessary for us to be able to move, move that. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to public comments and then member comments, and then we'll, the meeting will be adjourned. But first, um, uh, public comments. Thank you, Chairwoman. I just wanna announce for the public that the only uh, um, comments that we will take at this time are those continued from item number one, non-agenda public comments. So I will call the names of those people who were either here or had their hands raised at that time. And if you are still present, please virtually raise your hand. Tim Bailash, Alan C., Laura D., Mike Bullock, Blair Beekman, Stakeholder 1776, and the original draw. Tim Bailesh, please go ahead. Thank you again, committee. It's late and I'll try to be a uh, bullet point. Uh, at the Friday uh, transportation meeting, the idea came up about a prequel to meetings where a staff member might be online so that public members or anybody else could kind of get a navigation 
of the report that's made the PDF. And so I wanted to just quickly uh, bring that up as an idea to uh, consider. I have some considerable IT experience and not to talk about it, I would really offer the IT people to have a little more specific inputs, outputs about the interfaces that we have for the public. I think they might enjoy some of that. And uh, just wanna um, uh, second Mayor Gaslin's uh, comments about the amount of water that's on the coast right now uh, and the and the environmental parts of these plans. So uh, I thank you for taking that and uh, thanks for your work. Thank you. I have four remaining non-agenda public comments. Alan C, please go ahead. Oh yes, your budget presenter just a moment ago mentioned, I quote, only delivered handful of quarters, the rest are not needed. I repeat, the rest are not needed, are you kidding me? We voted back in 1907, extended up to 2044 transit half cent sales tax to expand all the freeways, not for bike lanes, not for bus lanes, not for carpool lanes, but roads. The very first speaker this morning is talking about a new sales tax. Good luck with that. You guys are actually having employees campaigning with my tax money to fight your cause and put more tax on people. It will not happen. And concern of Title 42, Hey, uh, that's our San Diego rep. You closed Golden Hall. Perhaps now you should reopen it because you're going to have thousands of people across the border. You got 2,000 homeless out in the street right now. Reopen Golden Hall, open up that homeless shelter, help the community. I yield back. Our next public speaker will be Mike Bullock, who will be followed by Blair Beekman. Mike, go ahead. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Mike Bullock, Oceanside. And uh, I just want to report this, that CARB's latest scoping plan is really a, a kind of a shocking dose of reality. Uh, and it should not be ignored. Uh, as you probably know, California's first climate mandate is to reduce emissions to 40% below our 1990 level by 2030. CARB's scoping plan shows how California can do that. Um, and it calls for a 25% reduction in per capita driving by 2030. And just comparing that to your 2021 regional transportation plan, uh, there CARB only required a 19% reduction and that was for five years later, uh, 2035. So uh, the new scoping plan is, values 30% uh, more five years sooner. And it does come right out of the state. We must have price parking that needs to be widespread and we need uh, a road use charge. And I would say it should replace the, uh, the- Thank you, your time expired. Our next public speaker is Blair Beekman who will be followed by the final speaker, the original draw. Blair, please go ahead. Hi, thank you, Blair Beekman. Thanks for allowing public comment. Uh, I wanted to comment a uh, good luck on Del Mar redevelopment issues. Um, there's some incredible tributary uh, water issues uh, around the Del Mar area. A real good luck to yourselves to make that a, a real sensitive uh, open conversation how to, how to address. I wanted to be able to also address uh, co concepts I've been trying to say all meeting about. Uh, San Diego is trying to consider a future of smart streetlight technology at this time at, at, at a $4 million price range and budget. You know, believe it or not, I think we can honestly talk about the future of that smart streetlight stuff in the $50,000 to $150,000 range. So obviously, we really can talk about a future of minimal use practices of technology, and we don't have to go for a plethora or a ton of tech. We really have to balance the future of policing and the concepts of reimagine. I hope it's time you guys take that stuff really seriously. Thank you. Our final public speaker is the original draw. Please go ahead. Uh, I love when you guys use words that we can use against you, Sean, like we go win the money. You're such a fool. And then, you know, we let people say what they want. Shut up, Nora, that is totally bogus. And I'll get into that in a second, but you can also say we can, uh, what we can and can't control. 
you act like your hands are tied and you're not implementing all these things and you don't have control around it. You just want all the money to do that. So therefore it's like, Nora, you don't silence. You were an activist, were you? Well, then why do you continue to silence people and call us your friends when at the BOS meetings, I was brutally assaulted by the sheriff. And what did you do about that? Nothing. And have you said anything about it? No, nothing. It's very interesting because the way that you do all these other meetings, you sit there and you silence the people, you tell them that they're not on topic. And here you're trying to act like, oh, I'm trying to like listen to the people. They're my friends. BS. And the whole thing that um, Alan said about expanding the roads and using taxes for that, what are you using those taxes for now that were allocated for that? You're doing it for something else, just like everything you're doing now is not going to be used. Thank you. Your time expired. That concludes the non agenda public comments. Thank you. Any additional member comments? All right, seeing none with that, the meeting is adjourned and we will see you at our next meeting. Have a wonderful, oh, happy Mother's Day to everybody. If you're a dog mom or a people mom, happy mom. <laughs>